What we do is we take a big issue and a big idea and we talk to a really smart person about it. And what's even more exciting is what we're talking about tonight, the Farm Bill. Yes, this is so exciting. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Lee Eggerstrom. So we've got a big interest in local agriculture, and we, we started to talk a little bit about the Farm Bill. So this is the quote-unquote Farm Bill. This is the 2012 uh, projected outlays for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and that's what's in the Farm Bill. If you take a look at 74%, that's what we used to call food snaps. That's now called SNAP. That's uh, school lunch programs. That's uh, women, infant, children, nutrition programs. I'll let you take a guess at what they're trying to whittle away on at the budget for this year. Right. Why is local something that's important? I mean, isn't it great that we can get food from anywhere in the world at any time? Yes, it is, and that's also one of the absolute wonderful things about international trade and the expansion of trade. You know, a hundred years ago, just before America got engaged in World War One, I, I remember. Had, <laughs> Seventy percent of the American population was somehow, with employment or families or something, were connected with a farm. Today it is a magnificent one percent. The true one percent. <laughs> That's who all those people are protesting you, against our farmers. Without any further ado, I am going to turn it right back over to our cast will be creating long-form improvisation, which, as I mentioned, means everything is made up and not pre-scripted in the least. Everything is based off of the conversation that we just had. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the Theater of Public Policy cast. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> no, Aunt. This is how Grandma said she. Grandma didn't do it with her back. She lifted it with her legs. Well, I have what I mean with my legs. Yeah. Sorry, you show me. It's okay. No, go ahead. You no, think it's you okay. know? I'm not the one percent. I'm everyone else. Well, I don't even. Uh, uh, I, I, I see a, sp a consumer, the, the community. We can sell it. Uh, it's a local. Uh, here, open the boxes. And the neighbors, hey, Tom, Margaret, get over here. Oh, Cut to that. Margaret. So you already purchased your CSA, and you're trying to sell me your CSA. <laughs> We're trying to sell you healthy food. Oh, there you go. Okay, okay, huh? Why don't you just eat this? It's like you're afraid of it or something. I'm a little afraid, afraid of it. We want to share the bounty. <laughs> police? Police, yes. Yes? Oh, gosh. Please. Okay, is this the Nutritional Assistance Department? There is a tomato or a radish of some type, but possibly arugula. It's dark, so I can't tell. And he's trying to break into my house. Hold on, ma'am. Oh, oh my Hold god! On. It's genetically modified! Don't you Are the incentives right, either for our farmers or for the nutrition programs where we're actually incentivizing or directly subsidizing people to grow or eat foods that are good for them? The, ins the nutrition education information is grossly underfunded. 46 million Americans living in below the poverty line and uh, one in seven households with children have some real serious questions about a adequate access to foodstuffs. <laughs> there is no darn way a conscious, conscientious public can really cut down that 74 percent of uh, in outlays. That go what about a food. not conscientious public? <laughs> <laughs> so, 